Okay, the grown-ups are about to talk, and I need for all the children to leave the room. No, wh where are you going? No, 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 no. The ones who are children in here. We'll wait. As always, peace family. This is Ayapo, and the channel is Ayapo Yapa. Ayapo Yapa is an acronym that stands for if you aren't pissed off, you aren't paying attention. Uh, after a while, I stopped saying that after everybody is pretty sure what it means. I'm just at the beginning of this thing, but you know what I mean. Um, today, we're going to talk about the M word and words, um, other words that I feel and others feel that we should no longer use with each other in our community. This is in part uh, based upon this ongoing feud that's happening. And uh, I'm not going to go into that. Everybody knows who and what I'm talking about. And if you don't, you will. But it, it seems unusual to me, uh, if I'm to be honest, when we have people who are are pro black it doesn't matter it doesn't matter who who you know who you are in our community if you claim to be either like pro black or conscious or 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 whatever for our people and then the moment that you get rubbed the wrong way excuse me or 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 ticked off or whatever then then you revert to using um slave language or using the language of our oppressors that's contradictory to me so we're going to talk about that a little bit uh, before that i'm going to read something from one of my spectacular subscribers this is uh dirty vinyl one two three sent this and i want to thank him or her i can't tell well uh, you know whether you're a man or a woman um so I'll leave this and leave it ambiguous. But uh, Dirty Vital, Dirty Vital One Two Three writes, in part, uh, this in, this is part and partial of Black culture. People can get mad with me for saying this, but believe me, but I believe it to be true. I'm sorry. Calling each other. Let me start this over. This is part and parcel of Black culture. People can get mad at me for saying this but I believe it to be true. Calling other black people names that white people have taught us, coon, bad wenches, bad bucks, and the most overused of them all, nigga slash nigger, in all its various spellings to put down and tear apart our blacks to whom uh, we have disagreements with or we believe are supporting white supremacy against our best interest. Neely Fuller Jr. believes we are all loaded with poison, not because we're bad people, but because we've been trained so well to, uh, I'm sorry, trained so well in the notion of being anti-black. He stated that black people should stay away from other black people unless it is about being constructive or to solve problems. Anti-blackness is so ingrained within the society that even the victims, most often than not, I don't know when they're being anti-black. Unity has become a worn out cliche that we've heard countless times, but in order to achieve unity, we must first start with ourselves before we can start anywhere else. Thank you, Dirty Vinyl 123. That, uh, that pretty much encapsulates my, my entire thought process on the subject. I've heard it said. I've heard it said for years, for years. And I'm an older guy. I've heard it said for years. 
that when we use the M word, when our people use the M word, it's our attempt to to take control of that word, take ownership of that word. Let me we 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 have never nor will we ever own that word. Okay, we'll never own that word. Nor should we want to. It's a derogatory term that was used by our oppressors to to speak of us in disparaging ways and to put us down. Why would you even want anything to do with that word or the word coon? You know, words like these were, were words that were used by our oppressors. We don't need to use them on each other. We are a creative, brilliant people. Contrary to what what we're, what we're uh, they're trying to teach us in the media, contrary to what they present us as in, in all the media, we are a brilliant people. And we're brilliant enough to come up with terms for our own traitors, because we do. We, we have our own uh, traitors among us. And we have people who actually do fit these various descriptions. But the problem is, if we're using the words of our oppressors to, to describe them, then we have, we've moved into the place of our oppressors. We become the black person on Fox News that they use to talk about their own people in disparaging ways because they know they can't get away with it as much as they would love to. Okay, so I, when, when it comes to, and I'm, I'm going to use this term just for the sake of what I'm saying, when it comes to the, to the term coon, I said in my very first share that I don't, I don't like that word and I try and I resist using it. Lately, I've been sliding into using that term, but I'm about to slide back out of using it because it's a word of our oppressors. I'm not going to use it on our own people, even if it's deserved. I call them ciphers. Why do I call them ciphers? I call them ciphers because I, I took the term from the character in The Matrix named Cypher, the movie The Matrix, called Cypher. He was willing to go against his own in order to gain the favor of his oppressor and for his own comfort and for his own benefit. That's a, that's a cipher. Okay, so it, it, to, the, to the point that he was even willing to kill his own and did kill some of them, um, you know, in an attempt to get in favor with his, his oppressors and to have a good life for himself and that's why when you hear me use the term cipher I, you know it's, it means the same thing again for the sake of this uh, particular share I'll have to use the words and then you won't hear me using them anymore all a cipher is is a coon but I won't use the, I, I, I won't use the word coon anymore because that's their word I won't use the N word because that is their word. And what you may want to do is if you if you hear um, uh, hear this uh, this rhetoric going back and forth, if you hear these arguments going back and forth between people, I want you to try a little experiment as best you can. Create a little transcript for yourself. Type out maybe several lines of what this person said. You know, any person who, who has a beef with somebody and they're going back and they're hurling all these insults and all the Edward and all this different stuff. And what I want you to do is is write it out. I mean, physically write out like several sentences of what the senses of what they're saying. Why am I why am I saying to do this? If after you have written out or typed out those sentences. You read those sentences and you can't tell the you can't tell the race of the person who said it, then that's a problem. That is a problem. It's one thing to look at someone who looks like you and they're saying that and they're using these uh, using this language. 
There's a whole nother thing. If you if you write something out or type something out and take it to someone on a sheet of paper and they know nothing about the background of the person that said it and you read it and you cannot tell, you cannot distinguish between whether that was a white person or a black person or an Asian person or whoever who said it. And I guarantee you, if you were to type out some of this stuff that's being said right now, and just read it as a transcript without knowing who said it, you would think it was freaking David Duke that said it. We got to get our heads out of our butts and understand what we're doing and what we're doing to ourselves. You know, every, everybody gets caught up in all this drama. As I said in my last year, we have got to get off of this drama. We've got to get off of it. So I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually physically working on a list of things that, uh, that our oppressors call us or have called us. And, and I'll probably list them, but it's actually more personal, you know, for myself. And I'm going, to, I'm going to make a conscious effort to stop using these terms. And if you see me in a, in a, uh, um, a, a share or in a chat room or in one of my responses, and I'm using the language of our oppressors, I want you to call me out on it. Call me out. Because we need to start holding each other accountable, holding each other accountable. As I said in my, in my share about Lisa Cabrera being right, and, and Lisa Cabrera is right. We don't need to be accountable to white society, but we do, we do need to be accountable to each other. That's where this, this thing starts. Well, the thing starts with ourselves, and then it, start, and then it, it spreads to the community. We need to be accountable to our community. And if you're talking to me in such a way that you're talking in, in, uh, as if I, it's just you're my oppressor, and you can't tell the difference between the oppressor, the oppressor's uh, rhetoric and what you're saying, then there's a problem. That is a problem. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to start keeping my share short. But that's what this was about. We have, we have got to eliminate some of these words and terms from our, from, from our language, from what we're saying. And if you'll notice, when it comes to white people, they get upset with us because they're like, well you, well, you say it to each other. Okay, there's two things they love to say, especially when it comes to the M word. Well, you call, you, well, you call each other that. Stop giving, take that excuse away from them. And then the other, the other excuse that they, well, well, the M word, you know, a white person can be the M word. They don't mean that. They do not mean that. That is just their attempt to keep that word as part of the vernacular. That is just their attempt to keep that word as part of the vernacular. They don't think, they don't really believe that white people can be the M word. Give me a freaking break. They don't believe that. Historically, that word has been used to speak disparagingly of black people. And so the the, the way to really take control of it, the real the way to really uh, uh, get rid of it. Is to get rid of it. Stop calling each other that. You get you get upset. You get upset. Use the extensive vocabulary that you have at your disposal. But don't go down into the gutter. And by and, 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 and for God's sake, do not use the language of your oppressor on your own people even if they deserve it. We're brilliant people. We can come up with our own words.
we can come up with our own terms and phrases. We do it all the time, don't we? That's why that's why slang changes so much. We we can we can come up with our own without borrowing from them. Cause they cause every time they hear that word, and I, I, I believe this. I believe this. Every time they hear that word, it doesn't matter who says it. It sounds like music to them. Sounds like a sweet, sweet song. Every time they hear the M word pertaining to one of us, no matter who uses it. Stop using it. Stop giving them that excuse that we call, we call each other that. We used in our music and all this garbage. Let 2018 be the year that so, and I don't believe, I'm not I'm not crazy. I don't think it's gonna just that everybody's just gonna stop using the word. But let 2018 be the year that we really start making moves to eliminate this word from our language. They'll never remove it from theirs. Okay, but we can remove it from ours, and then the shock value will come back. The shock value will come back. So, okay, I'm done with this shot, so I was going to end it, uh, you know, a few minutes ago. I sure do love your family. I'm concerned about my family, but we're going to be all right. But we definitely have to roll our sleeves up and get to work. And I will see you in the next share. Like, share, subscribe, um, comment. I'll see you in the next share. Peace.